Hi, everyone. This is Audrey Solomon coming to you from Seattle, Washington. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about how WalkMe uses WalkMe. So uh, we like to call this drinking our own champagne. Um, and right now I'm a principal sales engineer supporting our strategic accounts. Um, but I've been at WalkMe for about five and a half years. And previous to this role, I was super involved in our internal implementation of WalkMe, uh, managing a lot of the strategy for that within our sales organization, um, focused a lot on sort of our demos and how they're accessed and getting sales reps with WalkMe to find out about demo assets and engage with them. So um, that's kind of a little bit about me and what I'll be talking to you about today um, is sort of, first of all, how our DAP team works, you know, who's involved, what does it look like, um, and then how we work cross-functionally. So I have a really exciting example of how we sort of worked across many teams to come up with this great WalkMe implementation. Um, and then I have a lot more examples as well. So the meat of today's presentation will really be kind of diving into um, some different cases of how we use WalkMe internally. Um, my goal today is that you walk away with um, sort of a, a really exciting new idea of how you could implement WalkMe. So I hope that some of the stuff you'll see today um, gets you thinking about how to use our product in a new way. Um, so kind of going over our extended DAP team. So of course, we have the core DAP team. So we have a DAP manager, and we have builders, and they're really responsible for overall strategy, things like, you know, even what does our widget look like across all of our different apps? Um, how do we create consistency? And then some of our larger rollouts that kind of come from the IT org, like our global HR systems um, rollout that's going to happen in a few months, uh, sort of coming from that team, and they're building all of the WalkMe components required for those. Um, and then within each department, we have a DAP group. So that's going to be a project manager who's really overseeing all the different um, things that go into making WalkMe come to life. Um, we have our sort of SME, subject matter experts. Um, that's going to be like a director or a VP level um, person who really knows um, what the intention of these different digital tools are. Um, as an example, our very own Dennis Mahoney of our global services organization. Um, recently kind of was the subject matter expert to get WalkMe on financial force as that was just rolled out like a week ago. Um, and so in having WalkMe as part of that, of course, it meant that there was no training um, and he was critical to sort of making that, that whole cycle happen. Um, and then within each of the departments, we also consider um, sort of all the different app users to be a critical part of that. You know, we are lucky and, and a bit unique in that every single person that works at WalkMe knows about WalkMe and thinks about WalkMe all the time. So every user of a system, which is every employee, um, is important to contributing to how we implement our own product. Um, and then the builders, of course, are sort of part of those different organizations. Um, and you can think about, you know, how all the different orgs would have a similar group of people. And then lastly to that, we sort of have our executive governance. Um, those folks at the C-level who are ensuring that we're able to get the necessary resources to support um, our WalkMe strategy, things like that. Um, and even our CEO actually implemented and built his own shout out that went live today. Um, I'll show you that in just a, a couple of minutes, but um, even our C-level folks are, are actively contributing to the WalkMe strategy. Um, and all of this kind of goes into this general culture of contribution, right? Everybody's bringing ideas, giving feedback. Um, you can see these different launch points for providing DAP requests and DAP feedback. Um, and we even have an internal group um, where people kind of post ideas that they have or cool WalkMe implementations that they were surprised to see on one of the systems. Um, so we really want people to sort of make, make this a part of their everyday to talk about different ways that we're using WalkMe and that we could be using WalkMe. Um, so I'm going to go now into an example of how we came to a, one of our implementations um, and really worked cross-functionally to get there. Um, so this example comes to you in Salesforce, um, and we call it the Smart Sales Resources. You can see here um, this launcher that says Smart Sales Resources that I'm kind of hovering over. Um, and I'll kind of talk first before I show you the example and how it works in action. Um, I'll mention that sort of the pain points that went into this was um, first from the operations team. So 
um, you know, they were having trouble sales operations and that there's this field called audience um, and people were just either filling it out with something inaccurate um, or just failing to update it when they got new information. So it's one of those fields that's required, but um, people just kind of put anything in there to get past that validation. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only person that um, has felt that pain before of something similar to that. Uh, and the, the objective or the DAP objective of the operations team um, is really to have accurate reportable data, of course, um, and not have to do manual cleanup and waste time doing that. In parallel to that, the marketing team had this pain point in that their teams were wasting a lot of time uh, or spending a lot of time rather answering questions from people that were just about where to find information, right? Sort of acting as a help desk, which is just not a good use of their valuable time. Um, so their objective is, of course, to increase the visibility of all these great assets that they create. They have these brochures and white papers that, you know, don't mean anything if people don't know they exist and, and actually use them and send them to customers. Um, so now you'll see uh, actually this in action. So here you can see the users clicking on smart sales resources. Um, and in this case, they're getting information based on not only that audience field, but also the stage field. So here, because they're in stage five proposal, they're getting a proposal template, but they didn't get anything audience specific. Um, and you can see WalkMe is actually telling them that that's because they haven't filled out that field yet. Um, and now they've put sales into that audience field. Um, and you'll see they click on the same launcher and now they get specific resources about selling to a sales buyer. Um, so they have this brochure, this white paper, and it's all linked in this walk me pop up. Um, so this is sort of a way to use a carrot instead of a stick, if you will. Um, you know, we're not punishing people. Um, that's not very effective as we all probably know, but we're enticing them to put the right information there because if they do, then they get these amazing resources right within the application. Um, and in many cases, those resources are only available through this means. Um, and so in order to track success, you know, I wanna make sure I mentioned that throughout the presentation as well. You know, we looked at things like data quality um, over time once this was implemented, um, and then also monitored the number of questions coming into the marketing team about where to find certain information. So. Um, I, all, I really want to talk about how this came to be. So um, this is a really interesting sort of cross-functional collaborative example. Um, and it all actually started from that application user that I really wanted to sort of touch on at, that, um, at the point where we were talking about the different DAP teams. So an individual who is using an application had an idea. Um, I guess a lot of people were asking this guy, Jason, um, for this particular um, deck as an example, you know, he's a veteran employee. So he has access to this deck um, that people really liked and they were constantly asking, Hey, can you send that to me? Hey, can you send that to me? So he went to the project manager for the sales org and said, can you please put this in Salesforce where all of our salespeople will, sh will surely find it. Um, so I don't have to keep getting bothered about where to find this information. Um, so that project manager and the builder created sort of a project version one, um, which is a simple solution, just, you know, having, that deck accessible um, with a launcher, right? They went to the DAP manager. Um, the DAP manager sort of, of course, centralizing and giving final approval on all these things. And um, because they sit at the center of all these different departments and their strategies, um, they knew that this could actually tie really well into one of the objectives that the operations team had, um, which was you know, getting that data quality to, to a good level and particularly focused on that audience field. So in liaisoning with them, they came up with sort of a slightly more advanced version of that same um, project that was created. Um, and then they also realized that the marketing team could benefit from this if it was just tweaked a little bit. So they liaison with marketing and that kind of came to that solution that you just saw um, in the video there. So lots of people involved, you know, the stat manager is really acting in this case as a way to centralize and align some of those goals and KPIs across the organization. Fantastic. So I have more examples for you. I know this is going to be a really fun and exciting part of the presentation. So I'll kind of dive right in. Um, I, I touched on this a couple of times, but to kind of get started and give you um, the high level view of what WalkMe looks like internally, um, we have recently implemented our own desktop solution to all employees. So now if any employee needs help with something or needs to access a resource, 
they can actually do it right from inside their desktop. Um, and that ties in with that example I mentioned about our CEO creating his own shout out today. Um, so this morning we got this um, coronavirus prevention shout out, um, and that was actually something our CEO built and deployed himself. So like I said, everyone's really involved in bringing Walk Me to life here. Um, and that's similar, you know, that, that sort of desktop shout out is pretty similar to um, something that we did in our recent security awareness um, training or examination that we did, which was back in August. Um, and we use a shout out in the user's desktop as well as in their Gmail and a couple of other systems to really get people to complete this on time. Um, because the security team's pain point, right, is that they would otherwise have to chase down employees who haven't completed that assessment. Um, and they really, really want to get that 100% on time um, examination completion by all the employees. Um, so they're not having to do all the administrative work to revoke access from those that haven't completed it, et cetera. Um, so by pushing this shout out and sort of bothering employees constantly who hadn't done that examination, um, they were able to get that 100% on time um, uh, training completion. So. Fantastic use case and something that we use a lot. Um, another example, you know, this one's in Zendesk. Um, and I like to call this the surprise platform change, if you will. Um, you know, the more common term here being change management. But um, we changed our internal ticketing system um, for the IT department. Um, it used to be something else, and then it became Zendesk. Um, and the IT team, the other pain point was going to be that they were going to have to do a lot of work to train and, and get people on board with the new system in order to make that switch. Um, so their objective was, of course, to make that vendor change without any impact to their team. Um, and so the great thing about WalkMe is that we've always had it in place, right? So even before Zendesk was in place, I would do the same thing to um, go and submit a ticket. I would go to my Gmail, I would click on the widget, I would click submit a support ticket, and then it would take me to the system. When they switched to Zendesk, and you can see this kind of happening here, um, you see the widget opens. When they switched to Zendesk, the process for me as an employee was exactly the same. I did the exact same thing, and all of a sudden one day, that system was Zendesk. And it didn't really matter because WalkMe was there to tell me exactly what to put in all the fields, um, and no announcement or anything was required from the IT department to tell everyone, hey, we've now switched to Zendesk. Um, you know, that added email notification was not relevant because, again, the process was exactly the same. Um, so for this reason, you know, we have sort of this challenge of benchmarking because we don't have examples of rolling out systems without WalkMe um, or what it would look like before and after WalkMe was implemented after the system change. Um, but, you know, we can estimate based on our experience with customers and, and previous companies we've worked at. Um, what in-person training and change management would look like um, without WalkMe there. Um, so here's an example um, of data integrity, and this is um, also happening in Salesforce. Um, and actually comes from my very own sales engineering team. Uh, and the pain here was that we, when we submitted support tickets to our um, product support team, is that those tickets were taking a while because they would go to tier one, um, and tier one, you know, the intent a lot of times is to make sure that the information is complete and answer, you know, some of the um, more basic questions, um, which usually, if not always, were ones that the sales engineering team was already equipped to answer. So we really wanted to push to get those tickets sent directly to tier two and really expedite that process. Um, but the support leadership pushed back saying that a lot of sales engineers submit really incomplete tickets. So we were actually able to build a case for auto escalating to tier two by implementing WalkMe. Um, so you can see all these different launchers here and those actually inject templates that give you the exact questions that you need to have answered in order to submit a ticket for that specific ticket type. Um, so by doing this, all the tickets now from sales engineering are complete, they're robust, and they're ready for somebody in tier two to look at them. Um, so that really helped expedite for the sales engineers um, what it took to turn around a product support ticket. Um, this is actually an example here, reactive just-in-time guidance uh, that I just saw the other day, um, and it, it sort of surprised me. I didn't even know it was going to happen. 
Um, and, and I'm usually like pretty aware of what's been implemented um, from the WalkMe perspective, but um, I went to create an article in our internal knowledge base. And as soon as I clicked save, I saw this little pop-up that said, hey, did you create something new? You should share it with your coworkers on Slack. Um, so, you know, I think this is subtle. It's a way to sort of enforce things like best practices and recommendations about how we go about our workflows. Um, but it really helps sort of in addressing the knowledge team's pain point of, you know, they create content or other people create content and people don't know about it or don't know where to find it. Um, so driving that internal awareness through as many channels as possible is going to help them with achieving their goals and, and driving views per article up. Um, another example of reactive just-in-time guidance, and this one's in Salesforce, um, and this relates to a pain point from the marketing team, which is that um, they were having to do a lot of manual follow-up with people when they submitted reference requests. So a sales rep would go, um, say, you know, I have a prospect um, in the healthcare industry and I want them to talk to a customer in the healthcare industry. Um, and they would go to this marketing um, person who's dedicated to that. Um, you may have met her, Samusa, she's amazing. Uh, and so she was having to do a lot of manual follow-up because those submitted requests were really incomplete and just did not have the information she needed to help them get that reference. Um, so her objective, of course, is to make this process super easy and make sure the information is complete so that she's minimally having to do work to uh, do all this stuff manually and, and follow up with those sales reps. So I'll show you what happens. When you click on the reference request button, there's actually an invisible launcher. So you think you're just doing a normal workflow in Salesforce, um, but actually WalkMe engages you right away. Um, and then you can actually see, uh, we use a little uh, icon for our action bot called Andrew Botwell. Um, so we've given him a name. Um, and that bot will now ask the rep a series of questions about the reference um, and then autofill everything for them based on their answers. And then there's this critical part two of the process. So you've done process A and now they need to make sure they also log their top three reference choices. Um, so that was the part that people were mostly forgetting. So WalkMe was saying, hey, just as a reminder, there's a secondary process and making sure people did that part two. Um, and this actually was able to pull in all the different uh, accounts from the report right into the action bot so that the rep could choose the exact customer references that were their preference to use. And then those got injected right back into the reference request ticket. You can see here, um, all those are getting put right into the different fields here. Um, and then the user would go and click save. Oh, sorry, back to the slide. Um, so this made sure all the information was there, people didn't forget that second part, and Samusa's life became much easier. She specifically told me she saves like hours every week because of this action bot. So, um, you know, the number of incomplete requests submitted has gone down significantly, saving her time as well. Um, and you can see, I just wanted to add as well, um, our little icon here, I mentioned Andrew Botwell, um, loosely based off of the real Andrew Bothwell, who is one of our amazing sales managers here at WalkMe. Um, there are some more examples. I know we're running short on time, um, so I wanted to just use this as a last example for today. Um, and this is around marketing campaign engagement. So this one's a little bit unique, um, but one of the things that every marketing team wants to do, of course, is um, you know, drive organic marketing efforts. So sharing posts and, and sort of building that thought leadership on the social network. Um, and that takes some extensive time and social participation to actually yield those results. Um, so in order to increase that social media reach, they actually push um, shout outs into our Gmail um, with the sort of big campaigns that they're doing or posts that they want shared. And then all we have to do is click like me in that shout out, you can see here. And then it gets the employee using automation to go and like the article. So, you know, everybody with just one click in our entire company can help really, really contribute to our marketing efforts and quickly boost kind of the organic participation in them. So it really helps our marketing team and it's sort of a unique thing, but every employee is super willing to do it. It's really easy. And I think 
you know, I hope at least half of them actually read the content and, and learn something as well. So that's always a benefit. Great. Well, thank you everyone for your time today. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your week and or weekend. Um, and hopefully I see you all soon. Thanks so much.